everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and I just wanted to say thank you for all the wonderful response for my video on Friday. Um, my friend, or Tuesday, sorry. God, I get my days so confused. Um, my friend Jenny and I had such a fun time filming that video. Um, she's out of town for the first Friday or the first weekend, um, Saturday, Goodwill Saturday for November. Um, so we're not going to be able to do any thrifting in November, which you know, taking a break is not a horrible thing, but we will be back at it. And uh, someone suggested us taking the camera in next time. Um, we probably won't take the camera in on the half price Saturday just because it is such a madhouse. Um, but we could definitely do a separate trip and kind of show you how we go through the store anytime, whether it be on half price Saturday or whatever. Um, anyway, we thought that'd be kind of fun. And uh, she's definitely game for coming back and even modeling some of her finds. So thank you guys for that wonderful response. That was a lot of fun to do and something a little different. All right, today I had said that I was going to do some of my Minerva makes, and I'm still going to show you those, but I am headed um, tomorrow, actually. So I'm filming this on Wednesday, and when you're seeing this on Friday, I will already be there, but I'm heading to Milwaukee for um, a sewing conference. So I have in the past been a member of ASDP, which is the Association of Sewing and Design Professionals. Um, I dropped my membership when I closed my sewing business, but I'll probably be re-upping here um, soon now that I am kind of... Uh, back doing a full-time job in the sewing field. But I have been asked to speak on a panel for their conference on Friday. So I'm going to be talking, it's the panel is all um, alternate um, streams of revenue for sewing. A lot of the women in the organization are alteration specialists and custom sewing, um, a lot of bridal, that kind of thing. Um, but they are diversifying into some pattern makers and costume designers. Um, cosplay is like a huge thing that's coming. Um, so really anyone that works in any way, shape, or form in the um, sewing profession. Um, but I'm speaking about having a YouTube channel <laughs> on Friday. Um, so I have been furiously sewing a few things up um, to get ready for that. Number one, the dress code um, is business casual. And so I do need a few somewhat nice things to wear um, for the conference. Again, I'm taking a class on Saturday, a glove making class. <laughs> I realized I needed to enunciate that a little bit. Um, speaking on the panel on Friday and then Thursday and Sunday are just travel days. Milwaukee's only about um, four between four, 15, four and a half hours from here. Um, so not too bad of a drive. But my um, gut issues, my health issues have been wreaking some serious havoc here recently. In fact, I just was at a doctor's appointment yesterday with my GI doctor. Um, I have some autoimmune sensitivities to some food, but they think there's maybe something else going on. Anyway, I'm having a whole host of tests done in the first week of November, but until then, I've got to figure out a way to um, combat the fact that my waist likes to fluctuate wildly. So I do have my two sewing workshop pairs of pants. I've got my those pale pink ones and also so my um, kind of a camel colored, I think they're called mustard twill, but I think they look more brown than yellow, um, kind of a camel colored um, uh, pencil pant, <laughs> both from the sewing workshop. Those both have elastic in the waistband, so they definitely work. But I really wanted to take a pair of jeans, if for nothing else, for my travel days on Thursday and Sunday. So I dug into my archives, and I had purchased the... Um, with my own money that I, this is an affiliate link for this pattern, but I did purchase this pattern with my own money just because I really thought it might be something I could use. And it is the Mountain View Pull-On Jean by Itch to Stitch Patterns. And I'll pop a picture of the pattern up here. So um, I had heard that it was, they just did a blog tour actually in September for Itch to Stitch Patterns and quite a few people did the Mountain View Pull-On Jeans. And we're talking about how easy it was to change the leg shape. So the pattern as is, as you can see, is kind of a boot cut. Um, more of a boot cut than a straight leg. I would, I would definitely call it a boot cut. Uh, and a lot of people had done different leg variations with the pattern, and we're talking about how she had it in the instructions and how easy it was to change that up. So I thought if for nothing else, just having elastic but still getting the look of jeans, I'll try out the pattern. So I, um, and actually this pair of jeans is going to be in my, um, the thrifted module that I'm kind of working on. Oh. Hold on. So I used some denim with, um, I think the pattern calls for between at least 20 to 30% stretch. Um, I have closer to 30% stretch. Actually, I have closer to probably 40. 
and the two corduroys that I used. So I made one pair of jeans and two pairs of corduroys and all three have different leg shapes. So I thought I would go through all three of them with you and kind of talk about the details of the pattern, um, how I'm finding it so far, and um, and then I'm, I will, as I'm talking obviously with each one, kind of show you me um, styling it and how I might be wearing it to this conference this weekend. All right, so let's start off with the jeans. So first off, it has a very, what makes it pull on? It has this wide waistband. Now the pattern does not have belt loops included in it. I added those and actually on this first pair, they're too short. I had to kind of fudge it a little. Um, only because I thought, why not? You could totally wear a belt with this um, because the, you know, when you undo a belt to go to the bathroom, taking them on and off, you know, it's still releasing that belt so you can very easily still pull them on and off. Um, I've not worn them all day with a belt on yet. I've just worn, and I've really only worn the jeans, but I have had these on for three days in a row now, and luckily my denim is staying in fantastic shape. I was a little worried about bagging out because this denim was only $4.95 a yard. I bought it on my Chicago haul. I've got fuzzies all over it. I've been sewing in these. Um, yeah. I Okay, so this is the denim that I bought in Chicago at the Discount Textile Outlet, and... Um, yeah, so far so good. So again, the pattern has this wide waistband which makes it pull on and you sew a piece of elastic right in onto the seam allowance, not into the waistband, but into the seam allowance at the top of that waistband which helps it keep its shape so it doesn't stretch out so it stays nice and firm and this hugs right underneath my waist. And even though I'm short, I usually don't have to make any ish any changes to the rise. Sometimes I'll have to change the front rise on things a little bit but usually the back rise I never have to, to mess around with just to give you a little, um, and this was no different, I didn't mess with the rise at all on this one. Um, the only alteration I made was um, I shortened the leg by two inches and then for this pair and my brown cord pair, I actually um, made a second hemline three and a half inches up from the regular hemline um, to do a cropped length. So I left it, you know, I have one, you know, to do if I want it to like the floor and then another one if I want it like an ankle pant, which is how I like to wear my skinnier legs. So those are the alterations I made. And then I do on my inner um, thigh at the, t at the crotch seam on the inseam, right at the crotch on the inseam. I always shave off 3 eighths of an inch and take it down to nothing there in that the top of the inseam um, seam allowance on both the front and the back because my hips are set, my legs are set in on my hips. I don't, you know, my legs, my hip joints just aren't out. So I need less fabric between my legs, if that makes a sense. And so I get weird p like um, pooling right there if I don't just scoop that out. So um, that's a, I make that on all of my pants patterns. Um, there are functioning front pockets. I know with a lot of like jigging patterns and that kind of thing, they're just faux front pockets, but these are functioning front pockets, which I really love because I like to just, I just like to put my hands in my pockets occasionally. Um, that is a faux fly, obviously, because these are pull-on jeans. Um, there's back pockets. And then it has this center back seam that runs up the center back of both legs. And it's got your standard yoke. I chose not to do contrasting top stitching on these just because I wanted like a streamlined skinny pair of pants. Um, so I just did navy blue for all of my top stitching so it kind of matches my, um, my fabric. But um, these are so linty. I've <laughs> literally been wearing these for three days straight. And again, I still don't have any bagging out, which makes me happy. I was afraid this would be cheap denim. But this center back seam on the leg, I was a little not sure about just because you don't typically see that on jeans patterns. However, hopefully I'm showing you um, the pants on me right now. It is so flattering for fit because you, it, it kind of takes in some of the dart. I mean, it just shapes around the rear end so well. I am a big fan of the center back seam on the back of the leg. It's just so flattering. And if you didn't want to highlight it, you could always not top stitch it or you could top stitch it in like a navy like I did if you were going to do contrasting top stitch on the rest of the pant. Um, but I just find it really, really flattering. So in the instructions, um, she has you basically, you know, put the front together just like you would with a normal pair of jeans. You put the front together, all the pockets and everything, and then you put the back all together with the yokes, pockets, all of that. And then she has you baste your outer seams and your inseam um, and put them on inside out if you want to if you want to change the leg width. And then I literally just focused on one leg and starting just a hair above my knee, I went from nothing at the seam line and just started pinching out um, somewhat, you want it to be 
fairly equal, although if it's not completely equal, that's fine. But on either side of my leg, I just slowly went down and pinned out. And what is wonderful about this method is that I have very shapely calves, and so I have a hard time with my pants catching on my calves, especially a, a skinny pant, and I get the real bad wrinkles right at, behind my knee um, because the pant won't fall because my I've got big calves. But um, being able to do that, so if you look at my seam line, you know, it comes down to the knee, and then it starts to go in, and then it kind of goes out where my calf would be, and then it goes back down to a skinny ankle. Um, but again, you've got that center back seam in the back. So if I needed to mess around with more room for my calf back there and that center back seam, it'd be so easy to do just to add a little more room because it's in the back, which is where I need the extra width. Anyway, it made it very easy. And then you just go back and I sewed those seam lines on that leg and then I just folded my legs together, marked the seam lines by pinning through on one leg into the other one and so they matched. Um, and then I sewed the regular ones, added the waistband, and these went together really quickly. I think I made the jeans in about th two and a half, oh, about three hours, I think. Um, and that was with taping together the pattern and everything. Um, and I've been wearing them ever since. I, I mean, these have been a life send because I have been, my stomach has been so not good um, past few days. But my son, I let my son pick out my pocket lining. So he went with two different pocket linings. Um that coordinate. <laughs> he had fun doing that. So, um, yeah. And again, they're functioning pockets. I am just really over the moon with these. I mean, they're skinny jeans, but they feel like leggings, and I had to stop myself at three pairs, because how many pairs does one need? And I'm trying to get away from jeans, but I do need a couple pairs, and these are really going to work. I th go the distance, I, th I think, um, especially while we're still trying to get my stomach figured out. So... That's the jeans. All right, so on Friday maybe, I had to go to Joann's. I had to go to Joann's for a couple of things and, oh, I know what it was. I was doing some crafting with my kids for their fall break last week. And so on last, a week ago, Wednesday, I had to go to Joann's for a couple of things. Um, we made felt gingerbread houses and it's a Minerva Crafts make. And actually be sh I did two holiday posts for them. I did a holiday outfit and also a little holiday craft with my kids. And I'll show you both those in one video, but probably not. It's going up on the blog. Um, I feel like next week, one of them is, and then the other one right before November, but I'll probably wait until November. Just, you know, let's at least get through Halloween before I start showing all this stuff. <laughs> So I will be showing you guys both those things that we worked on, but um, those are going up in the Minerva Crafts blog. But anyway, I went to Joann's and I had to get some more craft glue and some embroidery floss, like the pearl cotton embroidery floss and some embroidery needles. And of course they were having a sale on fabric, so I just went over to look and they had um, a number of stretch um, corduroys there and a lot of stretch, like really comfortable stretch. Like I said, about 40%, maybe even more, I don't know. So I bought two colors. Um, I also bought a few other things. Let's see, I bought a stretch suede for a knit blazer that I'm gonna make, and I bought two cuts of knit, and then some Christmas knit, some of their doodles fabric for PJs for my kids for Christmas. Um, but anyway, I did walk out with these. So let's show you this first. So the first one I grabbed was this nice chocolate brown stretch corduroy. Again, I was trying to get away from jeans a little bit this fall and winter, um, and I thought, well, stretch corduroy would be so comfortable with all of the stomach issues I'm having, and they would work great for these pull-on jeans, and I can mess around with the legs of both of them, so they're all a little different. So again, I did a skinny leg on my jeans. With these brown pair, I kept them cropped, but I did a straight leg. So this is not as skinny as the jeans. Um, again, I put these on inside out and pinned, but kept it looser around the ankle. I kind of actually, I took it in a little bit from my knee to my calf, and then I just went straight down from my calf measurement um, to the to the bottom. So once I, because there is a flare, a slight flare to the pattern because it's a boot cut, but once I got down, you know, towards the ankle, it was a little bit more that I was taking off, but I just literally went straight down from my calf um, to create the straight leg look, and I love this so much. And again, I put on the belt loops, and I have this paired with a, a belt here, and my, I'm wearing the sweater. This is my um, Julie Hoover Designs uh, Klein sweater that I knit out of my alpaca wool. It's very oversized and I love it and it's super, this is an alpaca bamboo um, mix and I finally finished knitting this sweater and I'm very happy with it and I got to meet the alpaca that this alpaca actually came from when I was at a farm in Missouri. So <laughs> Judah was his name. 
So anyway, same thing. We've got functioning pockets. Jack picked out... This was some fabric. I don't even know why I bought this, but it has like old radios on it. You can kind of see. I think it's a um, cotton and steel, a really old cotton and steel print maybe. Um, again, I did the straight leg. Everything else is the same though. These are so comfortable. And again, I think I could even, um, I'm not opposed to tucking these in, especially to tucking tops in, especially with a belt. And I may try tucking in my um, Zamora blouse that I made, my pussy bow blouse, and just seeing how those look. If that looks um, good with a belt, or um, just kind of how I'm feeling with that. But I may, that might be how I wear them at this conference, with the pussy bow blouse, and then this, and then my boots. Um... But I mean, it's chocolate brown. Like, this is going to go perfect. I mean, such a great... You're also... I did not top stitch my pocket all that great. And I've got a little bit... Look at that. A little bit peeking out there. Bad Whitney. <laughs> so, anyway. I don't think they look that bad when they're on. So, um, I'm very, very pleased with these pants. They are going to get a ton of wear. Again, that center back seam is just... You know, and you can't really see it. But it is just great for fitting close to the rear end. I mean, it's... <laughs> All right, and then the last pair I made, I kept the regular boot cut leg on these. And I lengthened them. So these are to be worn with boots. Um, this is kind of a nice, uh, I don't know, a plum color maybe? What you would call this. I would call it plum. Um, but again, I actually use the same fabric for the pockets as I did for the brown pair. Again, it's got a longer leg, so I kept the flare. I like these. I have them on. <coughs> I've also been inhaling corduroy. Um, when you sew with corduroy, it leaves like lint, like little baubles of stuff everywhere. In fact, I've just had to go through my sewing room again with a lint roller <laughs> to pick all those up. But I just was covered in them, and my daughter thought I had ants on me. She was like, oh my gosh, what's wrong? And it was just, you know... Anyway, I've been inhaling corduroy dust. <clears throat> but anyway, so I'll try and get the color of that. So they're just a real gorgeous color of like a dark purpley color. It's a plum. Um, yeah, I mean, again, they're just so stinking comfortable. And I have this one paired with my um, Rowan cardigan, or... Uh, turtleneck that is made out of the merino wool and I love it with that dark green and then I've got my um, Brando jacket and my uh, sewing workshop Brando jacket and I want to point out I did go back and top stitch that jacket and so you can see what it looks like now that it's top stitched I love it a ton better I'm so glad I did it um, and this I'm going to take that jacket with that's going to be my coat I think Milwaukee is literally the highs are in the low 50s all weekend so I'm going to be bundled up um, but I have one more thing I wanted to show you that doesn't have anything to do with these pants, but, um, yeah, I highly, if you have any issues with autoimmune and fluctuating waistline, I highly recommend these pants because I was getting down, um, I mean, it's just depressing when you can't wear real pants or skirts, uh, when I just, I mean, I'm, I'm, thank goodness I'm a seamstress where I can sew stylish things that, um, still work with that, um, issue that I'm having, but, I was just really sad, and I even told my doctor, I said, I just want to be able to comfortably wear pants and skirts that have normal waistbands and not have to always wear elastic. And he was like, I get that, <laughs> that makes sense. So I was just over the moon because I don't feel like these look like I'm wearing elastic waist because they lie flat against my body. Again, yes, the, there's definitely a waistband, there's not a button and, and zip closure up there, but when you have a belt on with it, I don't, you can't even tell because that would cover that area anyway. Um, or if you're just going to wear things on top of it, you really can't tell. Like it looks just like a pair of jeans and you could do regular denim with the contrasting, um, you know, like a regular jean top stitching thread, and yeah, you're set. You've got a pair of extremely comfortable jeans. Um, and I also just altered a pair of uh, pull-on jeans for my friend. They're Spanx jeans, so they have the Spanx um, panel, which I was looking at. It would be so easy to recreate just by putting some power mesh into the front part of the pant, basically, and attaching it to the center front seam and to the side seam, um, and just doing kind of a, not a straight across line to end it, but just it just was kind of free-floating in there so easy to do. I don't know why I didn't do it with those actually. Um, I don't though, that that thick waistband really adds a lot of tummy control. 
But anyway, I was like, well, those are a pull on jean and you know, people are wearing those fashionably. So I just need to get over that. But I am so pleased that I found this pattern and I would make it up a hundred more times just to have warm pants to wear because <laughs> our weather got cold all of a sudden. So I, I need the warm pants. Um, anyway, those are my Mountain View, oh, my Mountain View jeans. I wanted to show you guys this. Okay, when I was in the Merlot colored sweater that I had on with my skirt, a lot of people commented on that, and that's actually a ready-to-wear sweater that I got when I was in Glen Arbor at a shop called Cotton Seed Apparel. It's an adorable little woman's, women's shop um, there in Glen Arbor, Michigan. And I bought this gorgeous scarf. So this isn't thrifted. I actually paid. Um, I mean, it wasn't expensive, though. I think I, it's 100% cotton, but look at this scarf. Isn't that beautiful? Aren't the colors on that just gorgeous? And it's got like the brown, which I'm totally bringing into my wardrobe right now, like the whole border. It's got kind of the Merlots in there. It's got the dark teals, kind of the pine green that I like to wear with a little bit of cooler reds. Actually, that's a warm red there. So there's more cooler reds that are like down here, a little bit of pink. I mean, I put this on and my mom was like, yep, yeah, you need to buy that. Um, so I am going to be taking this with me on the conference too, and I think this is going to help me get a lot of mileage out of my suitcase as well. So I'm very excited. I'm going to be packing in a module for um, my conference, and it's going to be a lot of those colors. So <laughs> chocolates and, um, you know, the plums, some Merlot colors, some of the pine greens, um, but yeah, that's my plan. All right, that is all I have for you today. Again, I am actually, um, this conference has a fashion show on tonight, the night that you're watching this, on Friday night, and I'm actually taking over the, um, the Instagram account for ASDP on Friday night, and I'm, they're doing a red carpet before the fashion show, and I get to be the host on the red carpet. So I'm gonna be doing my best e-entertainment <laughs> Um, impression and I'm gonna be talking to people on the red carpet and seeing what everyone's wearing because everything everyone will be wearing will be handmade usually um, not always a lot of these women work in the sewing business but that doesn't always mean you have time to make stuff for yourself but a, a lot of people do take this as a time to make something special because the people appreciate it that are there um, so yeah I will have all of that on if you have Instagram I will have all the details of where you can follow me on my Instagram so then you could go over there and follow along the festivities this evening Evening. So um, definitely go to my Instagram if you have Instagram and you can um, follow me over there this evening for the fashion show. All right, that's all I have for today. I promise next week I am going to show you my um, uh, some Minerva Crafts makes, especially my Rhapsody blouse that I turned into a dress because that was actually the Sew My Style for September. <laughs> I didn't do Sew My Style for October um, because it's a jean jacket and I just made the um, Atenas. Um, yeah, a Tina's jean jacket from Itch to Stitch, so I'm not, I don't need another jean jacket, so I'm not making it. Um, but I probably will take part in November again. So anyway, I just haven't showed you guys that yet. So that will definitely be coming next week, and I'm almost done with my mom's blazer, my mom's Jessica blazer. It just needs, the jacket is done, which in and of itself, all the structure that goes into that, and the lining is constructed. I just need to bag the lining and then do some last minute finishing, you know, tacking the hem, um, putting in the buttonhole and the button, um, and then giving it a final press. So my hope, if my mother agrees to it, she's going to be here next week, at the end of next week, is to film her in the jacket and kind of have her on the channel um, talking about my whole a review, basically, of the Jessica pattern, but seeing it on her. And then just also I'll have her on the channel, too, so she can talk to you guys. Um, but that probably won't go up next week. That'll probably go up the following week. I'll film it next week, but it may not go up until the following, like a week from Tuesday. But maybe it may go up next Friday. We'll see. <laughs> We'll see how things go. All right, so that's all I've got for today. I hope you guys have a lovely weekend, and I will see you all on Tuesday. Bye.